but we have come to the place now we've come to the place where people are broadcasting themselves on TV on radio in the streets seminars in theaters basically saying this you've got to confirm who I am demanding other people to confirm them you've got to call me by this name you've got to use these titles you've got to accept my feelings you've got to accept what I think you've got to accept all of the things that I feel are right about me you've got to confirm me and if you don't confirm me you're a hater this is what it's come to so I took a five hour journey to a city first in a car and then on the train the past few months me and my wife we have been looking for a new second-hand car you see we've been without our own car for around about five years now and we live on a farm we live fairly far away from the village where I work and where my oldest daughter goes to school and so we need a car a family car for life to function the way we need it to function and so me and my wife we've been looking for cars and we finally chosen these two cars in this city and so I'm going to travel to the city to choose one of these two cars when I get to the city I meet up with a relative who was going to help me to choose the right car and so we get to this car shop now I see the car that me and my wife we've been looking at and you know it's not perfect but I'm like this must be the car and this is my first time buying a car now and so I don't really know how things work and so I ask the man can I take the car for a test drive and he asks for my driving license my ID and this is my first time buying a car so I'm not asking questions so I give him my driving license and he gives me the car keys and away we go I take the car for a test drive and I'm fairly happy with the car but my relative now he advises me not to get the car and so he tells me Albie let's go this is not the right car for you and so we leave the car shop I'm feeling very disappointed because we've been looking for months and we finally decided you know this would be the car and I'm advised not to get it so I'm very disappointed we drive away from the car shop and we're going to get some lunch before I get the train back to my home and literally just as we pulled up at the restaurant it drops into my mind I've left my driving license at the car shop that man still has my driving license and this is bad on several levels one it is because the car shop is over a half hour drive back in the opposite direction two because even if we would drive back by the time we would get there the car shop would be closed and the other thing I've got to get back home I've got to get a train back home and so he's got my driving license and there's no way of me of getting it back before I've got to get home and so we're sitting there trying to work out what to do and in the end you know I'm like he's gonna have to send it in the post afterwards we're like well you know I've got to get home I've got to get the train back and so we start looking for train times and after a few minutes we both realize I've missed the last train I'm not getting home today I'm stuck here and I'm like this has gone from bad to worse I've got no car I, you know we've been waiting to get this car I've got no car he's got my driving license and now I'm stuck here and I'm like God why would you let all of this happen and so I asked my relative is it okay if I spend the night at your house because I'm stuck here I go back to my relative's house and I'm on my phone and I'm looking for cars I'm looking 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 and in my mind I'm thinking like this well you know what I can get the train back home tomorrow and I can look for cars along the way back home and try and find a car and I'll buy a car on the way home that's my way of thinking 
I tell my plan to my relatives, you know, that I'm thinking of buying a car on the way home, you know, because I've got to buy a car. You know, September was just the, the month for me. September is when I'm going to get a new second-hand car. So I tell them this, and they're like, Albie, that ain't going to work. It sounds like a good plan, but it's not going to work. And I'm like, why not? And they said, because when you get to the car shop and you ask them to test drive the car, they're going to ask for your driving license. They're going to ask for your ID. And you don't have your driving license on you. You don't have any ID on you. It's not going to work, Albie. Because basically what's going to happen when you get there and they ask you for your ID, you're not going to have it on you and so you're going to have to now say to them well one second let me call this man this man has my identity this man has my id this man has my driving license you know let me just get this man over there to send a picture and he can confirm me basically you're going to need someone else to confirm who you are and that's not going to work you need your id on you you need your driving license on you and they were so on me i'll you've got to get your ID you've got to get your driving license someone else can't have it you need it and let me tell you something that night and that morning knowing that I needed my ID and knowing that someone else someone else had my ID because my driving license is not just proof that I can drive it's my ID it's my identity whenever someone asks for my ID I pull out my driving license this is proof of who I am, what I am. It's my ID. And knowing that someone else had my identity, it was an unstable feeling. You know, there may come a time when someone asks for your identity. And I'm not talking about your driving license now. I'm talking about who you are, what you are, why you are, what's your purpose? And what is gonna be your response? Do you have your identity on you or does someone else have it can you confirm who you are or do you need someone else to confirm who you are you know not too long my mother came to visit me here in Sweden and when she got to the border she was asked some questions what are you doing here why are you here what are you going to do? Who are you going to visit? How long are you going to be here for? And she had to answer the questions and not only that, they were checking on their system to see if what she was saying was lining up with the truth. And let me tell you something, in that situation, when people are asking for your identity and asking who you are, what you are, what you are doing, if you can't answer the questions, you ain't going nowhere. When someone asks, who you are, what you are, what's your purpose in life, what's your response. You know, I have learned that a lot of us, in the same way that I was without my identity, so it is with many people in this world. They are without their identity. Someone else has their identity. And this is why many times when they get questioned about who they are and what they are, they have to bring in other people. They have to get other people to confirm who they are. And they say, well, listen to that person, or listen to those studies, or read that book, or listen to this group of people to confirm who they are, because they don't have their own identity. Someone else has it. Who are you? What are you? You know, many times when I ask young people this question, they have to turn to their friends. What do you think? Who do you say I am? What are you thinking about me? And they have to ask other people to confirm themselves. A lot of young people are very insecure about who they are and what they are. They are depending on other people to confirm their identity. In the Bible, there was a man named John who was called John the Baptist. And people were sent to him, the Pharisees, the priests, the Levites, people who, you know, really looked good among the people, people with a high position. They went to John the Baptist because they saw him doing something. He was out in the wilderness. He was out in the nature doing something and they're wondering what he's doing. And so they go to him and they ask him, you know, who are you? 
what are you? What are you doing? And John the Baptist, he gives his answer. He tells them who he is. He tells them what he is doing. He tells them why he is doing it. He knew who he was and he didn't need to drag in anybody else into the situation or trying to get other people to confirm him. He knew who he was. He had his identity on him. Now the Pharisees on the other hand, you know the people who really looked like they knew who they were, they were the opposite to John the Baptist because they were in need of people's confirmation. This is why we read that they were in the marketplaces meeting and greeting people. They love people to see them. They love to, you know, to look good in front of people. They love to sit in the high places, to sit in the high chairs, to have high positions so that they look good in front of people. And they love to be called a rabbi meaning teacher you know call me teacher i want to have this position i love being called teacher i love it when people call me by my title and so they lived for people's confirmation they lived you know for people to look at them as something great and they had this picture among the people that we're leaders we're good but ultimately they were insecure they were unstable in their identity and this is why they struggled when Jesus began to question their identity. Who they were, what they were, who they belonged to, who they really were. They didn't like hearing those things because they had built up a reputation among the people. And when Jesus began to question their identity, they became very insecure and they became very defensive and they even began to attack Jesus because Jesus was speaking the truth and Jesus was breaking down this this fake wall that the Pharisees had built up and so because of this and because they were envious of Jesus Jesus was getting more of the recognition now people were looking at Jesus more than the Pharisees now they began to twist the truth and they began to lie about Jesus and we read that they began to persuade the multitude they were persuading the multitude you know Jesus he's actually this Jesus is actually that and this is one of the worst things I can see that a person can do you know because I can lie about something, we can lie about something, but then to persuade other people. They persuaded the multitude. I've seen this before. A person can persuade the multitude. You persuade other people to believe a lie. Your lie goes out so much that it begins to affect other people so that they believe a lie and they believed a lie about Jesus and this is what they've done they were so insecure when a person is insecure in their identity they have to persuade others I've seen this I've seen young people go into a shop to buy alcohol they don't have their identity on them they go to the cashier and the cashier asks for their ID they don't have their ID on them because they're underage and so because they can't confirm themselves they turn to their friends and say tell them tell them that I'm of age tell them that I'm 18 what date am I born and so they convince other people they have to get other people to confirm who they are and they twist the truth and other people get dragged into the situation this is one of the worst things we can do to drag other people into our situations and get them to believe a lie or get them to tell a lie and this is exactly how it is when you cannot confirm yourself you have to get other people to confirm you why because you can't confirm yourself many of us can't confirm ourselves and this is the thing when we cannot confirm ourselves many times we are willing to believe whatever I will believe whatever in order to confirm my identity I will listen to whoever as long as they confirm my identity it doesn't matter if they're speaking truth or not it doesn't matter if it's facts or not as long as they confirm my identity I'm listening to you I'm willing to do whatever in order to keep my identity I am willing to say whatever 
in order to keep my identity. This is what happens when we become so insecure in ourselves. When someone begins to speak truth, I've seen this many times. I see this in the Bible, I see it today, I see it on TV, I see it on YouTube. When someone speaks truth, we're not willing to listen to truth. We're not willing to listen to facts because we just want people to confirm us. We've programmed our mind to believe a lie because I'm, I'm so desperate for people to confirm me. But let me tell you something, when you're truly stable, when you truly know who you are, what you are, many times you don't actually need to say much. And you know, I know God has been working with me on this one a lot. Because Jesus, when he was questioned by the Pharisees, by the priests, by the Levites, who are you? What are you? What are you doing? Who are your disciples? Jesus, he's saying the bare minimum. And you know, they're getting frustrated. Speak up, Jesus. Tell us, Jesus. And Jesus is basically saying, I've been speaking for ages. You know, I've been teaching for some years now. You know what I've been teaching. You know my disciples. I don't need to confirm myself. You already know. And when Jesus just before he's taken to be killed and he is with Pilate and Pilate is questioning Jesus who are you Jesus? what are you? Pilate is getting frustrated speak up Jesus do you not know I have the power to kill you? tell me who you are and Jesus he's saying the bare minimum he doesn't need to confirm himself why? he knows he knows who he is he knows what he is. He knows what he's doing. He knows his purpose. He knows his mission on earth. And when you truly know those things, you don't need to confirm yourself all the time. You don't need to drag other people into the situation. Why? Because you have your ID. When I have my ID on me, I don't need to drag in my parents. I don't need to drag in my friends. I just pull out my ID and I say, here it is, I'll look at it. I'm comfortable in myself. Why? Because I have my identity. But we have come to the place now, we've come to the place where people are broadcasting themselves on TV, on radio, in the streets, seminars, in theatres, basically saying this, you've got to confirm who I am. Demanding other people to confirm them. You've got to call me by this name. You've got to use these titles. You've got to accept my feelings. You've got to accept what I think. You've got to accept, you know, all of the things that I feel are right about me. You've got to confirm me. And if you don't confirm me, you're a hater. This is what it's come to. And many times we see people broadcasting themselves like this. You've got to call me by these things, otherwise you're a hater. And we call these people, you know, really bold people, really brave people that, that say, you know, look at me, you know, I dare to, to stand up for myself. But ultimately, and I'll say this as humbly as I can, as humbly as I can, when a person, when people broadcast themselves, when they have to go out into the public, into the streets, on TV, on YouTube, on social media, demanding people to confirm who they are, demanding them to confirm their identity, underneath the surface, it's a very, very insecure person. Because someone who is secure in their identity, does not need other people to confirm them. They're fine. They know who they are. Someone who is insecure needs other people to confirm who they are. Someone who truly does not have their identity on them, they need to call someone else. They need to speak with other people. They need to drag other people into the situation because they don't have their identity. And so when you see people broadcasting themselves, going out, you know, around places, you know, and telling their story and, and saying how they need to be accepted, underneath the surface, they are very, very insecure because a secure person 
does not need to do that. They can go on with life because they know who they are. Who has your identity? Who has it? Do you really have your identity on you? You know, the disciples, they knew who they were, they knew what they were, because Jesus gave them their identity. He called them by a name. He even changed some of their names. You know, this is who you are. This is what you are. This is what I've called you to do and to be. And they were stable. And when you're truly stable, you don't need confirmations. And not only that, you see that they were stable because they went all the way. They were rejected of men, but they kept on going to the point where they were killed. We understand that the majority of them were killed. They were put in prison and tortured and all of these things, but they knew who they were so they could go all of the way. And many people may feel like, well, you know, I'm not struggling with my identity. You know, that's other people, that's not me, but let me ask some questions. Let me state some things. If you struggle with questions like, who are you? What are you? What's your purpose in life? Why do you exist? Maybe you struggle with your identity. If you struggle with questions like, what are your giftings from God? What has God called you to do? What has God called you to be? Maybe you struggle with who you are and what you are. Maybe you might know what you are called to do and to be, but let me go even deeper. Can you show me in scripture what you are called to do and what you are called to be? Because a lot of people say they are called and say they know who they are and what they are, but they can't show anyone in scripture. They can't line up their calling with scripture. Can you line up your calling with scripture without having to jump over verses or twist the truth? Does your calling line up with scripture? Does it line up with what God has shown us in the scriptures? Can you do that? If whenever something drops into you, you know, if it's a dream or a vision or an idea or a thought, and it comes to you and you feel like, yes, this is what I feel God has called me to do in life. And you share it with someone and they say something negative. Nah, that's not true. And every time you feel like God is sharing something with you and you share it with someone else and they say something negative and you just give up on your dreams, you give up on your visions. Every time you feel like God has called you to do something, whenever someone says something negative, you give up. Whenever something comes in the way, you give up. If you're always giving up on dreams and visions and things that you feel are put on your heart, maybe you struggle with your identity because maybe you don't really know who you are and what you're called to do and what you're called to be because you give up. You are depending on people's confirmation. You are depending on people to say, yes, good idea. Yes, do that. You're depending on people. And when you're depending on people, you don't really know who you are and what you are. I believe one of the goals with this message is to find out who you really are. You know, and this is both to Christians and people that do not call themselves Christian. Find out who you really are. Where is your identity coming from? Is it from man? Is it from God? Do you truly know who you are? And I believe many times, you know, God will put us in times of isolation, times where we are alone, times when there is no one else around us. John the Baptist was in the wilderness. There's times when we need to be alone to truly find out who we are, so that we're not depending on people to confirm us, to find out who am I really? I've got to get on my own before God. And I believe this is one of the reasons why Jesus constantly was getting away from people. He was going away and being alone with God. You know, 
we see the prophets were alone with God. And one of the reasons is because when Jesus was in his hometown, the people were saying, oh, one second, we know who you are. We know your father. We know he's a carpenter. We know where you've come from. We know your family. Who are you now to say these things about us and, and, and about heaven and about God? Who are you? Because you see, the people were giving Jesus an identity. You know, they were saying, you know, well, we believe he's this and we believe he's that and we believe he's that prophet or that prophet. They were giving him an identity that was false. And this is why you cannot build your identity based on what people say because a lot of what people say is false it's not true and this is why a lot of us and a lot of young people are struggling with our identity because we're listening to people you know my identity my driving license whenever I look at it it stays the same you know, the information on there is the same. My birthday is the same. My personal number is the same. They don't change. You know, the only thing that changes on my driving license is how old I look. But apart from that, everything stays the same. Whenever I take it out of my pocket, it's the same. My identity, my ID card is stable. And this is how it is with God. When you truly know who you are in God, your identity is stable. When you don't have your identity in God, it's always changing based on how you feel, based on how you're thinking, based on what people are saying, based on the culture, based on you know what people are saying all around you. It's always changing because people's minds and people's way of thinking is always changing. But when you have your identity in God, it's stable. And this is why I believe we read in Jeremiah, God says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, right? Before you was conceived, before you was in your mother's tummy, I knew you. And what? He called Jeremiah to be a prophet. And why did God say that to Jeremiah? Well, you can see afterwards why it was necessary for God to say that to Jeremiah because Jeremiah was saying directly after no way I can't do this I'm too young I can't speak who who am I to do these things you know and when you continue to read you understand that the task God called Jeremiah to do would be a lonely task a lonely mission people would reject him people would attack him no one was going to confirm him who he was and what God had called him to do no one's going to confirm you Jeremiah so I have to confirm you his confirmation was in God not in man and many times many times we've got to get away from people to find out who we truly are your identity is in God, not men.